So I came out here again today for some filming alone. I was here yesterday, but uh, my camera glitched out and told me I didn't have an SD card. I, I do. There's not supposed to be anybody actually working on the ship today, so it would give us a good chance just to walk through and look at what's been going on. Uh, I find it interesting to see a lot of the interior wood. Actually, let's start out here and I'll show you something and point out some things about it inside. Hopefully I can get by without doing a bunch of editing on this and keep it this whole take. Uh, look, you see this piece of, a uh, big piece of, like, natural wood out here? Piece of log that's been, like, cut down the middle? Right here, you can see where this shape has been cut out of it, right? And that is actually shaped for one of the ribs. So rather than taking, like, normal planks and, like, wetting them and stuff to then force them to take on a, a curve, they just cut them out with that curve shape already done. I'm not sure if that's stronger or weaker than, you know, what I think of as the more traditional way of bending it. That's what I've seen in most other ship construction I've watched videos on, uh, bending rather than cutting in the shape. Um, again, I'm not sure if it's stronger. If any of you guys know, uh, put it in the comments. Let me know which one's better. Then up in here you can see where they've actually been replacing a lot of those ribs. And you can see the newer stuff being put in right here here and all along there in some of the last videos you probably saw how this stuff was so rotten and coming out like this is a little rotten on the surface but there's okay wood underneath right but these other bits through here were just in really bad shape okay, well, let's take a look inside first i'll give you guys a little poke though i think that makes for a cool shot Okay, let's climb up this. Yeah. You know, this railing I actually wanted to make higher. Like in the renderings I showed of what I wanted, I showed it being this much higher. And then I got this. I've tried having conversations explaining that I wanted this higher, but I think it's kind of falling on deaf ears a little bit. So, I'm just going to take what they're giving me and be happy with it. Because regardless, it means that I get to live on a ship, which is pretty awesome no matter how you look at it, right? Let's, um, I guess here at least you can see, because I'm, I'm remembering the last video was just stories on my phone and stuff, right? Not a whole lot to go off of. So I'll go ahead and show you what's here. Up on top now, and you can see down here in the bottom where they've laid all this plywood in, and you can see, like over there, some of the fiberglass resin, and up on top of here, where they're giving it that initial coating. Oh, trip. And then, over here, you see all this kind of stock stuff that pulled it up, and he says most of this is in good shape, so they've replaced a little bit, like, around here on the edge, and over here, but they left most of it intact up here, and they're just gonna glass over this then over here they've still got to cut this back into being a hole to put the mast back in the front i think people keep thinking i'm going to use this as a motorboat how rich do they think i am like it's it's a lot of fuel to go places on motoring it's just absurdly expensive i mean sailing slow especially on this catch with very little sail area compared to its superstructure but whatever i'd prefer go two knots take forever to go someplace than you know spend five hundred dollars a day on fuel <laughs> or more than that in some cases uh so here you can see again where they've covered all this up in the last episode you probably saw where down under here is where all the plumbing was run and i was sticking the camera down there and panning back and forth i'll take you to the end so you can kind of get your bearings to where we are because there was a scene where i poked the camera down in here and then pulled back out and you can see the engine room so that kind of gives you the idea of where we're at on the on the vessel and there used to be stairs up here that they're going to be reinstalling i like these big uh you know what do you call these like mooring posts well the mooring post i think is on the dock but at any rate you wrap your rope around here and everything it's good handhold by walking they're telling me they're going to be putting uh, like they have plywood here plywood <laughs> Uh, plywood on top of here as well, right? So 
and they tell me that's going to give me extra strength but i honestly quite like the way it looks as is i like these visible pieces of timber going through here and the idea of them being encapsulated and then covered on top to just be a, a smooth fiberglass surface just covering some fingerling teak i don't know it doesn't speak to me as much i like the look of this and i even think it would give you good opportunities for storage little hooks in here and you could like hang things you need or whatever else and get it out of your way so <laughs> good plan up there Hey. <laughs> Sorry, <Kat. laughs> okay. Now, let's go to the other side where I believe the stairs are still at and we can go look at the bottom. But first, actually, let's look inside the uh, master bedroom. I think that's where all the tools are being stored, so that'll be interesting to see. Actually, before that, let me go ahead and just continue what I'm doing here and talk about what's in this area. Again, my goal is to not edit this video any more than basically just keyframing camera locations and rotation from the 360 camera. Other than that, just to use it as is, you know, and see how that works. I've been doing some more raw videos lately. I want to know in the comments what you think. Do you want more tight edited and me thinking over what I'm going to say before I say it? Um, or do you prefer just kind of being drug around on the end of a pole, talk to, and just watch it through? Let me know. So, what was I going to talk about up here? Oh yes, the fact that I'll have to put in a drawing too. Actually, I've probably uploaded a drawing over the video one before last, I think, if my upload orders come the way I expect them to. But I want this higher. I want this rail bit out here to actually achieve the height of this. See, by up here, I'm going to swoosh up and then come out this way. And you can see here we have your bow sprit and your anchor at the end. But I want to have it where this railing is all the way up to here. I think I've mentioned this in a previous video, but whatever. Uh, reiteration communicates better, right? So I want to have this kind of coming up at this height. And then I want to have kind of a box section up here where there's sort of an opening in here for the anchor and everything to go through. But then another bow sprit on top of it to look cool and jump off of. Okay, and it'll be sticking the bowsprit out there further will also give me a good spot to put lines off of for other sail configurations and stuff. Right now she's set up to run as a junk rig. Oh great, and they've locked, I guess because the tools are in there, they've locked me out of my bedroom. That sucks. I was going to show you the bedroom and all the storage. That's, that's not a great feeling, being locked out of your own, uh, your own vessel. Uh, the window's unlocked. I could poke into the window. See. Seems like it's locked up on top. Now that shot I might actually edit because I have the camera in I think a dumb location. You can also let me know what you think of uh, my handhold position carrying this camera because I see some people that use these kinds of cameras with their rig removal that gets rid of the handle and everything. And you just see kind of arm out looking all funny flailing. I try to hold my arm that's holding the camera in a more neutral position so the viewer can sort of forget that there's a camera on a stick that I'm holding. Uh, let me know if that has any value to you. Uh, is, is it less distracting? It's sometimes a bit more tiring having your wrist kind of stiff down here. Cause I'm holding the heavy rod right here. And I have to switch hands every now and then cause it's all, um, you feel it like through here and twisting your wrist. Oh, at any rate. It's not actually an issue, it's not very tiring. I'm just filling air with talking about stuff, what's on my mind. So here's the kitchen, or the galley. Now you've seen the galley before in my previous episode where I was all dressed up as a pirate. Um, you can see it again, all this being torn up. I'm gonna come in and try to remove all of this. And I want to go in and replace this with like some uh, like raw wood, sort of like you saw downstairs, sort of where they cut a tree just kind of down the middle of the cross section and you see the edge where like the bark and stuff was. I want to have it like that uh, for the tables out here and then maybe another like a uh, bar top out this way and then build new custom furniture for this room and I think it's going to be an awesome galley at that point. Really sweet. Then obviously I got all the work to do up here but we're also taking off the bridge on top because it's too heavy. I'll probably do a whole episode just talking about modification ideas and the physics principles of the stability and everything. But suffice it to say now that I've got to remove the bridge, which I'm sad about, um, 
just because it's too much weight up high and it catches a lot of wind. So you have a phenomenon where the wind will kind of push it over and then all that mass up there kind of hanging over the edge wants to pull it down and it's just no good. Um, let's go up downstairs a bit. I'm not sure how the exposure is going to look though. I don't have a light with me, nor have I really devised a good way to do a light with this 360 camera because you know the lens has a lot of curvature on both sides and it's bringing in light and you can even see lots of flares and how it looks bad in the sun. So if I mount a light anywhere, that's basically going to be feeding into the camera and create a direction that I really can't pull images from very well. The best I can think of is to put like a light around the rod somewhere that's kind of emanating from it, but the location that it comes from is the area that the software focuses its rig removal on. Um, rig removal is a fancy term for when they remove things from the shot, like uh, when producing movies and stuff, like when they remove the cables and stuff that people are flying with. Um, I also quite like using that technique for removing drone shadows, but I've gotten too lazy to do it now. But here's the inside view of the side of the ship here where they're putting in these new ribs. This is exciting to see. Uh, I think it's a beautiful structure the way that it looks, and it's just exciting to know that it's going to be stronger. And I like the access through here better. Um, previously when I was filming in here dressed as a pirate, right there is the like bench seat uh, bed that I rolled off of in the intro scene. And then I had to hunch down and go through, this was the corner to the wall, and you had to squeeze through here and hunker down. I don't like that. So I think I want to actually remove this, maybe put another bed thing back in here, up in the V-berth for the crew, but don't have a wall here. Have it where you kind of crawl into it this way or hang your head over it as you're coming in this direction. And then pull out some of this. Um, and bring this up. The part of my concern is I'm not sure how much structural, how structurally important this is, but I feel like I could probably remove it and then put in some triangular shaped uh, like trussing up through here to kind of create a higher area where you don't have to duck quite as much to get through. Also, is it from here? Is this kind of getting uh, out of square a bit? Also, one thing I'm a bit worried about, but I haven't like rightly question the ship writes about yet is right now from what I can see the way the ship is sitting on land right now she's got a bit of a twist in her right um from uneven pressure across like the hull and it's not sitting flat and I'm not sure how big of an issue trying to replace rotten wood is why you have a halfway rotten ship sitting on uneven bracing at a weird angle is she gonna get reconstructed with a permanent kind of twist and disfiguration like, is my ship contracting scoliosis right now? I really hope not. Uh, the room for all your anchorage equipment is up there. You saw it before. I'm just kind of giving you a, an idea of where you're at. One thing I would have redone if I could go from the beginning again, after seeing how much work they had to put in replacing things, you can see right up in here. You see how I can stick my head up in here and this is taller? This is that hump that you see when walking on the top deck area. And this allows you to actually stand up once you're in here, though I don't really have room because of all these cushions and crap thrown about. Um, but I would have loved to increase the entire deck height to where this is, so the top is taller. And then you'd have headroom the whole way through here. And you'd have a lot more usable space and you can open her up. Well, I think it's kind of odd, and if you're more experienced shipwrights in the comments, let me know. It seems kind of weird to me that these ribs are so many pieces, and like have big gaps in them, like, like right here you see, and all that. I feel like it'd be stronger if it was more single piece timber, and then when it was butted up against each other like this, it should have greater overlap and more consistency. Like having it start sort of back here, and then come up here and then brace this way and then brace this way and then brace this way it seems like a big structural weak point to me i would think that you'd want to continue this rib this way but just have this brace on the side for stability or have one here and there but like this and i don't know i mean i'm sure they're still going to be doing more bit more work in here filling this in and making it better but i find myself questioning some of the strategies i'm sure they're good enough and that it will function but sometimes i look at stuff and think Maybe the way that uh, people have gotten used to constructing things isn't the most physically or like structurally sound way to be doing it. But I'm ignorant. I don't really know what I'm doing. 
but I, you know, I kind of have a concept of how, like, forces tweak things in geometry, and it just doesn't seem like a great idea. But I'm sure it's good enough. I'm not trying to dog on my construction people. And again, <laughs> I don't know their full plan. They may be moving things more in line with what I'm talking about. Uh, and here's my uh, fuel tanks. These were recently redone. I had them clean out the inside. Or I'll take that back. This is a water tank. This is a fuel tank. I do kind of wish they put the water tank, you can see down there, but it doesn't quite go down. I wish it went down further for lower weight, but whatever. I had them put on these inspection hatches so I can clean them easier. And the fuel tank actually runs all the way down under here, all the way down under here, and goes this way to about that line there, that opening. So you get that weight low and lots and lots of fuel. So good for motoring if I have to. And I got a, a big bastard of a motor, but for an engine. Ah, but again, like I said, that's really expensive to use. So it's more for navigating harbors and uh, maybe dealing with storms, you know? I feel more comfortable surviving um, bad conditions if I can just turn on the motor, power into waves, and control my position and, and power forward. If you have control over like your orientation and approach, you can survive a lot. If you're not just mercy to the conditions of being tossed wherever over the hill. Like, you don't want to be sideways to a wave, obviously. It's not good. Ah, uh, you've seen this before. But you can see all the light coming through now. Very bright, lots of holes. I'm trying to think if there's anything more interesting I could do with this space. Let me know if you have any ideas in the comments. Like, right now it's basically just a giant storage area slash kind of workshop, which I guess is neat. It's nice to have. But you're looking a third of, like, my useful under deck area, or more than that, is just this. It's engine room and storage. Like, I have my storage room is like three or four times the size of a bedroom on a normal sailing boat. Trying to think better I could do. And there's a lot of space taken up by these, which again, to me, don't look very structurally sound. It looks flimsy as hell. Like, I feel like you could get the stuff out of the way more just by using some more truss type triangular shapes up here and then here, and you have a stronger vessel compared to doing this, and more through space to use. Um, then up here, you can see where it goes. Uh, out to where I was walking with uh, Mayo the other day and poked the camera in here. Oh, and out there, look, you see this grate here? That's something I want to do something about. I want to... My camera quit recording. How do I... Okay, my camera beeped at me when I had the camera up there, and I'm not sure why. I thought maybe it was quitting recording from overheating or starting a new cycle, so I wanted to check on it, and now we're recording again. Anyway, what I was talking about was this grate back here, and I'm thinking I want to glass over this and then come up with another way to allow airflow in and out of the interior of the vessel and around the engine room. Because to me, this is a huge liability. Sailing vessels love to uh, heal over very hard in certain conditions. And I can easily see water coming over this. In certain conditions, you might even have this rail underwater, like while healed over heavily. And I don't want water to be able to have ingress points from that. I prefer all my air ingress points to be well above board and then just uh, use, you know, ducting and fan work to get circulation. That way I don't have to worry about water just flooding in. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's just not something you want, you know? Um, and here's the inside of it, so you can see kind of where you can see light coming through this grate and everything. That's just not great. I want that gone. <laughs> not great, and it's a, it's a great event. Um, yes, and the previous engine was all chock full of rust and stuff, like I mentioned in the piratey dressed episode. And half of me thinks that she may have healed over really far um, previously, especially with all that weight up on top and pulled in a bunch of water through here and messed up the engine. Or even over here, you can see the height the dry exhaust is at, I don't think is at a smart point. Because this, the water on the exterior of the vessel comes to like here, right? And the dry exhaust is barely above it. If this thing heals over, that's underwater. Um, just not great. I mean, it's got this bend a little bit, which does a little bit for you, you know, keeping stuff from coming in. But I don't think it's fantastic. I. Like, I figure a dry exhaust should actually be well above the waterline. Or if you're going to be this close, do a wet exhaust. 
that accounts for the fact that it's going to be underwater, you know, frequently. Um, what else? This, these structures here seem nice and strong. That's nice to see. That's see very good condition wood still. Don't know why that piece is up. Whatever. Um, let's talk about another one of those vents over here. The grates. Again, getting rid of them. Because I just do not like that liability. Because when she was initially built, she didn't have any of that extra superstructure above deck, right? Um, she just had, like, this here was sort of the hump that came up above the regular deck surface and gave you headroom to walk. But then they built another galley on top of this and another uh, berth up front. And a... Um, another head up top there as well. So a lot of weight up top, which makes her sit lower in the water, heal over harder, and just makes these, again, a big liability. I'll stop harping on about it, but yes, they gotta go. They scare me. <laughs> when using it like a proper sailing vessel. I get the feeling the last guy mostly had sails on it for looks, and we're just gonna motor around, but I'm not rich, so I gotta use the sails. And back in here, you can still see all that uh, plumbing and stuff, what was underneath the deck before that I was showing you. So I'll have to be crawling in here doing maintenance, messing with all that. And then I think they're going to glass all this wood in to seal it from uh, issues in the future. Which seems smart functionally, but I'm not quite the biggest fan of it because I like the look of all this wood in here. It's going to look kind of lame glassed over. Tell me what you think. Do you think it's a good idea to glass it over just because you know, encapsulating the wood all the way around in glass is just a good way to keep it from rotting? Or do you think the decrease in looks is a giant downside. Not to mention the fact that um, glassing stuff in can be great until it's not. Because <laughs> like eventually you can get water ingress and osmosis and then your stuff winds up rotting inside this encapsulated surface that you can't see it inside of. Though that's probably not such a big issue with what's there now. Well I was gonna throw the I'll stop recording a bit early from the unexpected guest I encountered but now Look over the edge. This might be a good thing to roll credits over. Look at the kids playing soccer. Isn't that wholesome? Or is it soccer? I don't know what to do. Maybe it's four square of some kind. I don't know. Oh no, I think it's like a monkey in the middle sort of deal. Well, thanks for watching.